This neighborhood could be any neighborhood in Canada. Your neighborhood. Do you know what your neighbors are up to? Clandestine labs, or clan labs, that produce illegal synthetic drugs are operating in neighborhoods all across Canada. They are producing these drugs in huge numbers. In 2007 alone, police seized almost four and a half million ecstasy tablets and 1.7 million doses of methamphetamine, more commonly known as meth. We used to find a lot of clan labs out in the rural areas. Now we find them in the residential areas. Because they're in the larger centers, they're close to access to chemicals, access to the laboratory glassware, and the closer they are to those facilities, they can just keep cooking nonstop. Chemicals are very uh, toxic, so they'll put them outside, but they'll put tarps over them and try to hide them and disguise them. Uh, they'll keep garbage and collect garbage rather than put it out to the curb so passerbys and police uh, don't notice it as much. They become very immune to the uh, smell of the odors in the house, and we quite often will find a, a huge clandestine drug lab in the basement and people living upstairs right in the same house. And, and they either don't care or just aren't aware of the, the dangers they're putting their own health. All uh, drug producing labs like, like this, whether they're producing methamphetamine or ecstasy based drugs, all have large amounts of solvents. They're really a chemical time bomb waiting to go off. They inevitably catch fire and we've had numerous fires and explosions right across Canada in the clandestine labs. Clan labs can be very elaborate and expansive. Or very simple and small. Clan lab operators do not discriminate. They set up shop in all types of residential neighborhoods. Rich, middle class, poor, in single and multiple family dwellings, motel rooms, campgrounds, mini storage buildings, in RVs, and even rental trucks. All of these labs use toxic, flammable, and explosive chemicals that pose great dangers to first responders such as police, paramedics, and firefighters, and to the families who live in the communities where they exist. But what the first responder won't be aware of is exactly the types of uh, gases that could be in the air, and what we refer to as lower explosive limits. There could be solvents, there could be concentra high concentration of gases that could pose a uh, risk of fire or an explosion. There is a misconception among some drug users that clan labs are sterilized places operated by professional chemists in spotless white lab coats who produce safe, clean drugs. The concept is if it's a pill, it must be regulated, it must be formulated as to what the composition is, and that's not reality. And of course, they're designed very colorful. So when they hear it's ecstasy, it must be ecstasy. They have no idea what the composition is. But even if they believe they know, the reality is they don't because these are not made in any type of facility where it's regulated. It's in an area that's being created by an individual who wants to make money. He doesn't care about you or me. And so they use the cheapest ingredients to make up a batch as quick as possible and then put it on the market. So there's no way anybody could know. You would have to take it to a lab. The toxic waste clan labs produce is staggering. For every kilo of meth that is made, five to six kilos of toxic waste is created. This number triples for the production of ecstasy. The hazardous waste is disposed through city drains, stored in garbage, tossed in the garbage, and even discarded in our parks. One deep. Check it, and it goes. 
Witness my wife, a man man trapped behind a piece. Got a mind two sides, survive the proper sleep. That these illegal drug labs even exist in our communities and are often right under our noses is hard for most of us to comprehend, considering the damaging effects of what they produce have on our youth or kids. First time I did meth, I know. I know. I was screwed. I like sell the clothes on my back to get it. They'll do anything for it. I hooked, but not on stroll. Like it was like in-house kind of stuff. My friends didn't even want to hang around with me. Like after a while, it wasn't funny anymore. I was just a psycho. Like I would scream at people for nothing. If they do not get off them, unfortunately it's death. They do die. And that's the sad part. And we don't know, it doesn't have to be years of use before they die. You could get a bad batch of drugs tonight, and that's the end of you. Your life is over. Ecstasy and meth. These so-called recreational drugs are far from being safe or recreational. They are toxic and potentially lethal. I'm so sorry about this. That's all right, That's all right. I didn't know how to screw you this much. It's pretty scary, man. What do you take? Two pills of ecstasy. What do you normally take? Uh, I've never done it before. I've never done it before. You took two off right off the bat. Many of the ingredients associated with the making of synthetic drugs are derived from common over the counter products such as acetone, camstow fuel, starter fluid, ammonia, cold medicine, striker plates from matchbox covers, iodine, and lithium batteries, to name a few. For everyone who uses it, it is impossible to determine what and how much of these hazardous chemicals are in the drugs that they are putting into their bodies. Yeah, it's made with like Drano and you can buy the stuff. Like I used to know the whole list of everything that was made of, but I don't really remember. But it's all like chemicals and like stuff you can, that's probably underneath your sink. The effects of all synthetic drugs are unpredictable. Ecstasy users may experience a sense of paranoia, anxiety, fear, and many more unpleasant effects. Yeah, there will be some lingering effects. Some people may have very definite speech problems, um, maybe memory problems, coordination problems. It's the brain damage. You don't get to see that right away. We don't see that until further down the road. But every time you consume, there's going to be some brain cells that are affected and the degree that they're affected, we have no control over, and we don't know. Meth, which can be consumed orally, smoked, snorted, or injected, comes with its own array of nasty side effects. As a high-dose meth binge begins to wear off, users are at risk for injury or violence. Deaths related to meth use often result from suicide or accidental behavior. Well, uh, especially with chemicals, a lot of it is their physical demeanor. They become very pale, very sweaty, often with little exertion, black circles under their eyes, a very vacant look to their eyes. A lot of them just physically appear to fade away in front of you. Um, just basically go down to skin and bone. So you see a lot of the physical body just deteriorating. And then of course, a lot of them will develop sores and it's amazing the numbers that start off just with small bite marks, it looks like, and they refer to them, oh, I must have got bed bugs, must have slept somewhere, because often they're transient, moving from house to house, and it just spirals downhill from then, and then, of course, the psychosis kicks in, that they actually see bugs in their arms, their face, their legs. I was really, really scared of these bugs, and they talked to me and everything, and freaking, like, there was this other voice, and it's like, you wanna kill them? You wanna kill the bugs? You wanna kill them? You wanna kill them? and said you have to drown them in your blood. So I sliced open my skin, I like put blood all over, like I smeared my body in it, trying to kill these bugs. The majority of Canada's methamphetamine and ecstasy supply is produced domestically, with organized crime behind the bulk of production. 
When anyone becomes involved with synthetic drugs, they become part of a serious element of criminal activity and the deception and violence that accompanies it. I mean, it gets to the point where um, you'll do anything to get high, right? So selling yourself becomes an option to a lot of people. Um, that's a big thing that goes on, you know, and it's not just it's not just women who do that. It's it's straight guys who will do that because they want to get high. There's some obvious dangers with that. Uh, most of the, the clandestine drug labs we're finding in Canada now are being run by organized crime groups. Uh, they have big uh, monetary investments into this uh, illicit drug industry, and there's violence that, that certainly goes along with it. We find uh, weapons and firearms in uh, houses of this nature, and uh, they will come in, take over other people's turf, try to take over other people's clandestine labs. It's a, it's a, a huge profit margin when you're uh, dealing with illicit drug uh, production. And with that profit margin comes a, a lot of greed. For organized crime, the outrageous return on investment from synthetic drugs far outweighs the risks of turf wars or being caught by the police. They are in it solely for the vast amount of money that can be made at the expense of your kids, your neighborhood, your community. If my dealer doesn't want to get caught, he'll get me no, I'll volunteer. I'll give up my freedom, my right to freedom, so that I can go make a transaction for them, so that I can smoke my, smoke my Organized crime groups operating in Canada supply ecstasy and meth to countries around the world, such as the United States, Japan, Australia, and New Zealand. In response, Canadian law enforcement works closely with international partners to stem this flow, to reduce the amount of drugs hitting the streets, and to cut off the profits organized crime groups use to support other illegal activities. We quickly recognize that in order to be successful in our battle against synthetic drugs, we'd have to engage the countries where the precursor chemicals originated and are coming into Canada. The RCMP is well represented in a number of countries through our liaison officers, and we engage those different countries in order to assist us in identifying the precursor chemicals that are coming into Canada. Organized crime have moved away from small production operations in favor of super labs, capable of producing more than 10 kilograms of synthetic drugs such as ecstasy at a time. Putting this into perspective, that's more than 100,000 ecstasy tablets. These labs require large amounts of chemicals and lab equipment to operate. To aid the RCMP's efforts in locating them, it has developed the ChemWatch program. The program teaches those in the chemical and lab equipment industries to recognize the suspicious telltale signs of synthetic drug producers whose sole objective is to obtain their products for the production of illicit drugs. We'll go into the companies. We'll educate and train company employees how to report suspicious transactions. We want to prevent those chemicals from going to the drug traffickers in the first place. So we'll have that prevention out there with the chemical industry. In spite of the most diligent efforts by Canadian law enforcement, these labs continue to operate and produce large amounts of drugs. As it becomes more difficult for organized crime to obtain chemicals from companies in Canada, they are turning to China and India to meet their needs. As a result, more and more unscreened deep-sea containers are ending up in Canadian ports delivering the base chemicals they require. While the RCMP continues to increase its efforts, New enforcement funding from the federal government will further enhance its ability to combat the illicit production of synthetic drugs. There have already been significant results with large seizures of ecstasy and the closure of numerous ecstasy and methamphetamine producing clandestine laboratories. This new investment in drug enforcement will give the RCMP needed resources to better disrupt and dismantle criminal organizations that control clan lab operations. Canada's national anti-drug strategy, the RCMP was a grant, granted additional funding and we utilized that additional funding to increase our resources in the area of synthetic drugs. We positioned those resources across the country and provided them specialized training in the area of synthetic drugs to better answer and attack the synthetic drug problem in Canada. 
If you notice the telltale signs of a clan lab in your neighborhood, such as a strong chemical smell wafting from its exterior, chemical containers or lab equipment mixed with regular garbage piled in the yard or in a dumpster, call your local police agency immediately. No one wants a clan lab as a neighbor.